Bye bye. There's a camera. I'm not doing anything now. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Bye bye bye. Hey pickle. I love you too. Bye bye. Love you. Have a good day. Oh baby. I'm another day at work. I did not get enough sleep. Oh <laughs> you know, if, if when you get older you need more sleep. It's just a thing. You can't operate on three hours of sleep and be functional anymore. Kind of sad, really. Oh. So uh, it's actually been a bit, of, a bit since I last uh, vlogged. Uh, been had a lot of things going on and not a lot of time, so trying to create more content to deal with wasn't exactly on my high up on to-do list. But uh, there, there have definitely been some. Uh, things wearing on me. I've got my renovation I'm been working on. See about trying to get some pictures to put into the video and show you that. I'm doing an expansion to my office so I have a a uh, uh, guest room basically off of it so that uh, people come over they can stay there. And I've got a friend of mine that I'm hoping will be coming back from Nevada uh, visiting his mom. I uh, hope he'll come back and be able to stay with us for a while while he looks for a job. But uh, between that and uh, the podcast, I do I do a gaming podcast on uh, the Bob Rocket Gaming YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, holiday season, we're just uh, less than a week out from, uh, from Christmas. So I've been uh, kind of tied up with Christmas stuff and trying to get Renault done and we've got a lot of rain so that kind of makes Renault hard and uh, yeah fun <laughs> but uh, that said like I said a lot's gone on since the last vlog uh, I mean the last, the last vlog I actually did I actually put up ahead of the other which was a little note about voting get out there and vote and uh, I definitely holds true. I, I got I gotta say I, I I hate to say this because I hate to say I was right, but sadly I was right and Trump won. <laughs> so there's that. That's gonna be interesting. And I, I'm not even gonna say I'm, I'm I'm sad about it per se. I didn't like either candidate, and I don't know he's inept and she's slimy. So. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. I have no idea what's going to happen. I have no idea if this is going to be like a colossal blunder and, he, and we're going to drill America into the ground or if he's going to be some uh, some surprise candidate that actually does something productive. I, I lean towards everything's going to get fucked up but that said, you don't know. And I'm not I honestly, it's a little bit too unfamiliar of a situation for me to really want to put down odds on what, which, one, which way it's going to go. Um, I will say one thing about this, which is uh, back when Obama brought in uh, Wheeler for the FCC uh, position, a lot of people were all kind of bent out of shape because Wheeler, before his assignment as uh, head of FCC, was a lobbyist for the very people the FCC kind of butted heads with. So they were, everybody was freaking out thinking that this was going to be like a a rubber stamp session for all big business to just do what they want without really any oversight for the FCC. And it turns out that he is arguably one of the best things that's happened to us uh, in regards to FCC rules and whatnot. Uh, Wheeler did a lot of good. He, uh, uh, he did a lot to improve the situation. Definitely didn't go exactly as the way everything, everything wanted, but, you know, nothing's ever perfect. But he actually was a, a benefit, an asset to the situation. So, 
The only reason why I bring that up is, it, is it just to cover a reminder that, yeah, not everything is as it seems. And again, I'm not defending Trump. <laughs> God, am I not anywhere near that one. Um, but it just goes to show you that sometimes you can be surprised. Sometimes things happen that are unexpected. I will hope for that. I'm sure it's all not going to expect that, but I will hope for that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean that's that's where that that's that's going on. <laughs> this is gonna be an interesting four years, I'm sure. Uh, like I said, on the personal front, I've got my renovation I'm working on, got everything covered up in terms of tar paper and some of the siding up and whatnot. Again, I'll try to get some pictures for you. Nice and exciting news for you since you've never seen or heard about before, but nevertheless. Uh, a lot of family stuff. You know, typical of the holidays. Been busy. The kids are going to be uh, getting some uh, tablets. We decided to give them the, the Amazon Fire tablets. And primarily it's because me and my wife got you know a pair of the tablets to play with, as well as my uh, friend Seshi. And uh, it just it doesn't really measure up. They're good tablets. Don't get me wrong. They're, they're, they're solid, but. The problem is they're very squarely built around the Amazon ecosystem. I mean, so much so that even getting YouTube onto the tablet is an act of God. It's an outdated version. It's a pain in the ass. It, it's not convenient. You're not going to go to the Amazon store and, and download the YouTube app. It's not going to happen. Amazon wants you in their environment. That's it. So, there's that. Uh, so that's not exactly ideal. Uh, but one thing they do excel at is the uh, Fire app has a lot of really good parental controls. So if you create, you know, we have an Amazon Prime account, and we've created all different users under that account for me and my wife and my kids, and we can designate where our parent accounts and their child accounts, and we can set controls that we can, hello, whatever that is, that we can, uh, uh, set controls for the different accounts. So for the kids, for example, we have restrictions on them to stay, for example, between certain hours they can't use a tablet for games. Um, or uh, another neat feature is you can't play games until you've had X amount of reading time on the tablets. They have a, you know, the integrated uh, Kindle capacity. So you can say, hey, listen, if you sit down and do two hours of reading on Kindle, then we'll give you, you know, two hours of play on the game or whatever. So it's got incredible, incredible uh, controls for uh, parenting, which might work out well. So uh, we're going to try that out on them. Uh, we've given them, like, phones before, just as Wi-Fi devices for whatnot, and they got those taken away pretty quickly just because at ages of time, like, eight and nine, um, they were just absolutely glued to them and always being kind of smarmy and mouthy and, and, uh, well, long story short, we, we made the call and took the things away from them and told them, you know, you guys just don't need to have tools like that avidly at your disposal because all you do is sit and veg on them. You know, these devices, even though we're giving them their own devices to have, they are meant to be exactly how we perceive them, which is their devices are meant for utility, which is one part, which kids don't need really much utility from phones right now. Um, but they're also a means to fill the time when there's nothing better to do. And the problem is, is that very quickly with kids becomes better to do that than anything else. Like, no. If it's a nice sunny day out and you got a weekend, go outside, go be creative, go draw, you know, etc. Don't sit there and watch YouTube videos all day long. <laughs> so, we're going to give this another shot. And, you know, it, 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 with anything else, it's, you know, we're parents for our first time with four kids, so to speak. You know, so every, every year is a new year. Yeah, I'm, I'm a seasoned parent. I've got a 10-year-old daughter, 9-year-old son, and a 3- and 1-year-old daughters. But it doesn't mean I'm now a successful parent. It means I'm now a knowledgeable parent of kids of age 1 through 10. What comes next year at age 11, age 12, oh god forbid, 13, the first years of the teens? I have no idea. I'm just as ignorant as you are 
uh, <laughs> when it comes to how to handle the situation. So, uh, it's one of those kind of things. You learn. We learn, we try, we try new things. So, we'll see if this works out. Hopefully the topics work out well. We've actually got three, so we're going to be giving you know, one to my nine, ten-year-old. We're also going to give one to my three-year-old. Again, we, so we have very, very intimate control over what the tablets can do, what's on the launch screen. We feel that we can uh, hand off the, the uh, a specialized tablet to the three-year-old with specific apps that she can enjoy. And again, this is not a, you know, teleserve substitute kind of a thing per se. Uh, it's meant to be like, hey, we're in the car on a long drive going to visit Nana. This is something that the little girl can do to keep herself occupied and make all of our lives a little bit happier. Um, really advantageous for the short time that the big kids had their uh, devices. We went down to Disneyland. That's a seven hour trip. So that helped everybody's time be a lot happier and just made our lives a whole lot more sane. So we'll see. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, so the kids are getting that. The wife's getting some trinkets and doodads she wanted, as well as a little pendant that uh, I wanted to get her. Uh, I don't know if she's going to make it here on time, because like every self-respecting man, I wait to the last possible minute to <laughs> do my shopping online. So Amazon's giving me this wide berth of well, it could be here on the 22nd, it could be here on the 29th, it could be here on January 2nd. It's like, oh, okay. So we'll see if I have any presents for the family in time. <laughs> I'll do some nice uh, IOU cards in the stockings. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's, there's that. So, yeah, that, that, that's Christmas. Christmas happens for me and the family. Uh... Yeah, and, and, and to that end, uh, uh, it's still Christmas regardless of what happens. <laughs> so, whether the presents come or not, it's not a big deal. Uh, we, we actually have pushed really hard to make Christmas more of a, a family gathering time together more than the presents. And that's, that's a, that's a lovely idealistic idea to spout off to somebody. But in practice, <laughs> it's not nearly as easy, to be honest. I mean, the kids, they're kids, you know. Christmas is all about candy and the toys. That's, that's what Christmas is. And we've, we've tried really hard to make the holiday season in general more of a, more of a time of family. And I, this is not so ideal. It's like, well, I feel that family should be close. No, it's just, it really is straight up. One part of it is, I think things have gotten a bit crazy, and I'm doing my, doing what I feel is my best judgment to kind of just, I don't know, bring it back, <laughs> bring it back to the family. I have, I have absolutely no problem with how people treat the holiday, how they want to treat it for the most part. I will say, uh, I don't like the holiday shopping stuff they do, the, the Black Friday, I hate Black Friday. I, mean, I, I stayed as far away from Facebook as possible, because I didn't want to hear about every idiot that I happen to be connected to. So, oh my god, I got this great deal on Black Friday. It's not a great deal. It really isn't. Uh, it, it, I'm not going to go, I, I've gone on this tirade before. It's stupid, and you're, you're contributing to a really, really, really shitty man, uh, mentality where people have literally been injured and, this is shocking to me, killed because of shopping rush. Like literally getting trampled over because people are so damn busy trying to get the new Tickle the Elmo for this year, you know? Give me a fucking break. But anyways, you know, we, we've, we've taken more of the hatch, uh, uh, more of the, the, the based approach of it's about family time together. We try to do more things together than just going out buying stuff. So for us, Christmas isn't just uh, um, going out and getting presents and then having that one day where we frantically rip through all the packages and go whoopee and then it's over. 
Uh, Christmas started, you know, a while ago. Kind of mirroring the whole 12 days of Christmas kind of mentality. We actually take time to go out and do stuff together. We've done, like, in past years, we'll do the Christmas train down to Felton or Santa Cruz. We literally just train all dressed up. You get on, you do uh, hot cocoa and uh, ride the train for a little bit and sing Christmas carols and all that good stuff. But again, it's just, it's family time, which we all enjoy. So you're, you're taking what is normally a single day kind of thing and actually spanning it out. You're actually enjoying it for weeks. So that, that's, that's a nice, uh, nice advantage there. And that extends beyond just uh, Christmas itself. We have a lot of fun with Halloween and Thanksgiving as well, trying to do stuff of different sorts. Um, the other thing too is we actually, maybe heresy to some, but we actually let our kids explore and learn about all the different facets about holidays. In terms of, we talk about uh, things like where the different sources of Christmas came from. Where did Santa Claus come from? Where did uh, reindeer come from? You know, what's the history of, of gift giving and, and Christmas trees and all of that. So there's that as well. Um, we also uh, talk about things like Hanukkah and other other uh, holidays and religions because we actually talk about you know what other things go on there. So we do a lot of different things. And that's just, all that is, is just getting a chance for them to be exposed. Yeah, anyways, it's just, it, the reason why we do it is just to get kids exposed to all of what's out there so that they learn, understand, are knowledgeable, make their own calls on what they like and what they do, and just try to expose them to uh, what I would consider good mentalities for the holiday season. Uh, I myself am not particularly religious. I don't, uh, you know, I'm married into a Lutheran family, but we're Lutheran by the fact that it just happens to be the church that we go to now and then. And I stress the now and then part. I don't. My wife still does. Uh, not going to go any further than that, but I'm one of those people that has a mentality that I celebrate Christmas. And if I see somebody on the street around this time, I'm going to smile at them and say, Merry Christmas, because that's what I do. I don't say it to force my views on anybody or piss anybody off or be mean. I just, that's just, that's what you do. You say Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or whatever. Likewise, when people come back to me and say Merry Christmas, I smile and say thank you. If they say Happy Hanukkah, I say thank you. If they say Happy Kwanzaa, I say thank you. You say Festivus, I say cool. I don't care, I'm not offended. And the fact that there's so many people in this world they have vocalized it so much and get so offended by it. It's just ridiculous. You know, it, it, it's a holiday city. People get to represent what they love most. And that's fine. People who want to put Christmas lights on their car or an antler and nose and all that happy crap, they're just enjoying themselves during the holiday. They're not trying to shove it in your face. Lighten up a little bit. You know, you don't need to be an ass about it. <laughs> And that's kind of the mentality I try to teach my kids as well, is, you know, just chill the fuck out. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Everybody's different, everybody's got different views, it's fine. That's, that's pretty much uh, the holiday season for you guys. Uh, I do want to wish you a, a, a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, uh, Happy Kwanzaa, uh, Happy Festivus Day. I hope you guys have a good one, because, uh, god damn, it's cold enough that, uh, might as well enjoy something about it, right? <laughs> Alright guys, take care.